What's up everyone? Welcome to another Joel Arsenal YouTube video and this one I'm going to be unpacking all of the stuff that I brought home from the Jetski Brothers and I'm going to be revealing some of the upcoming projects that I have planned for this channel. If I seem a little bit low energy in this footage it is because I just finished a 13 hour drive from Washington to Alberta. I had very little sleep and then I wanted to get this footage shot because I was excited about it, but I was just very exhausted. So if I seem a little underwhelmed, that is not the case, I assure you. It's just that I was very tired and I had a long day of unpacking and organizing. So let's get into it. I will see you guys. I am at the Summit's border or Zumas, I don't know how you say it. And I got it. An awful load of trash here. Look at that. I'm trying to figure out how much uh, fuel is going into my truck, but it's in gallons, so I'm really confused. Prepaid for $200. I have no idea if that's, yeah. Money doesn't make sense here. Fuel doesn't make sense here. But it's a good time. I ended up at the border crossing. I didn't realize how close I was at my fuel stop. But uh, yeah, I drove like half a kilometer and here I am. I'm not sure how this is going to go. Hopefully it goes well. What is a Nexus Pass? Is that must be for people who travel back and forth frequently. BKV4591. Uh, he says something less than 100% confidence. So <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're good to go. All right. Thank you very I'll much. Take care. Take care. Yes. Yes. I made it. Yes. Yes. Oh my god, I'm so happy right now. Oh my lord, I'm so happy right now. Not just because of the lack of hassle, but because that means that I'm actually going to make it home at a decent time. If I would have been held up at the border, that could have meant that I didn't make it home until like, well, maybe even tomorrow. But this makes everything so much better. Okay, now I have to remember this is kilometers an hour and not miles an hour. I was looking here and it's 50. And I was thinking, wow, it's 80 kilometers an hour here? That seems excessive through a construction zone. But yeah, the speed limit is 50 kilometers an hour. <laughs> Do you guys have any idea how excited I am about this? Look at this beautiful pile of junk. Well, I made it all the way to somewhere, the middle of somewhere, nowhere, Wiseman Creek. And uh, something's happening here on the road. Traffic has stopped in both directions, so I don't know if there was some sort of accident or perhaps rubble went out onto the road. I'm gonna go stretch my legs. It is a beautiful view, but I'd rather be driving. Only kind of weird to be out out on the road. Yeah, everybody's having a look. Yeah. 
there's the leech, there's the bullet, there's my X2 and the legendary sea rat sitting less next to my uh, XISS 650 and uh, there's my garage. This really happened. Well, all right, I'm gonna start unpacking my truck by hand. I need to get some of my work stuff back in there. For one, I gotta work tomorrow. And for two, I need to make space in the garage to put all the stuff that's in there. So what I'm gonna do is make a pile of everything on the floor, show you guys what it is, and then try to do some organizing. is some scrap aluminum. I believe this actually might be a JS300 fuel tank and not a 550 or 440. Alright, we've got a bit of a mess of epoxy here. I'll just set that here. Some scrap metal. This is a hand pull for the bullet. Some more scrap metal and a ZXI 900 exhaust pipe with an adapter for a 750 or 800. You know what? That better boat epoxy just does not want to play nice. It wasn't nice to Jacob and now it's not being nice to me. More off cuts and scraps of metal. 900 elbow. We got 900 manifold, 900 head, and by looking at the head, you guys can probably guess what's going on inside there. This is a complete 900 engine. It has the uh, stator on it, starter on it. This piston is bad. The rest of the engine seems like it might be okay. Kawasaki 900 triple head number two. Nine hundred triple manifold. Nine hundred triple number two. We have a triple E-Box, either a 900 or 1100, kind of doesn't matter too much. We've got our 900 expansion chamber. This is something that might excite some of you. Hopefully it does. Inside of this box, we have some DASA parts. So I've got DASA pistons, cases, heads, cylinders, a west coast exhaust manifold, and uh, yeah, still need some bits and pieces, but we can make it work. Here is one set of CDK2s. Here is a second set of CDK2s. This is the crankshaft that came out of my 1100 before the Jet Ski Brothers sent it to me. This was the crank in the uh, mini jet boat before it uh, destroyed itself. Got a bin of more scrap material, some plastic. Inside here, Jacob has given me some uh, adapters, almost finished adapters from CDK to Makuni. Some blank off plates for uh, SVN, for getting rid of the fuel pump. Some of these throttle wheel adapter things are, what do you call it? Anyway, those things. Whole bunch of nuts and bolts, bilge fittings, telltales, pissers, whatever you want to call them. A whole lot of great stuff. My cat thinks he wants to go in the attic, but it's really hot up there, buddy. This is a 750 stator cover that I'm gonna try using on my 1100 because it's lighter weight and a little more compact. A little muffler, 
or resonator, whatever you want to call it. It's a stainless steel, looks like glass packed. I might try using that on my X2 to quiet it down a little bit if it fits in between the stinger and the water box. An e-box, I didn't even know I was getting this. Got an e-box for something. So these are Makuni SBN. I don't know what size they are. They look pretty big. I'll grab a micrometer. 46s, cool. A bunch of you have been telling me to get a set of SBNs and I finally have a set. That is really cool. All right, we've got a bunch of pump stuff. I've got an aluminum nozzle with a steering section on it. I've got a plastic nozzle with a, looks like a 750 steering thing. Got some 750 pumps that have damage to them. I'm going to try doing some repairs just to see if I can do that successfully. Here I have, I believe, a 550 fuel tank. I did not know I was getting that. This is a 900 elbow for the engine with the red pipe. We've got some more scrap material that I'm sure I can turn into something at some point. More scrap material we can definitely use. I'm not even sure what this stuff is, but a few of you have requested that I make carbon fiber 550 bed plates. And uh, Jacob felt bad for you guys and donated a bed plate to me while I was there. So we're one step closer to making that happen. I've got this e-box, which I still don't know what it's off of, but it looks to be perhaps Ah, that's what it is. It's Kawasaki stuff stuffed inside of probably a Yamaha e-box because it's all ground and cut out. So 1100 triple Kawasaki stuff jammed into a different e-box. That probably came off of the C-Rat because the C-Rat has a different one. This is uh, a little bit more exciting stuff coming up once again as my water bottle is right in the way. This is a clue as to what my next thing is. Probably most of you don't know what this is. If I looked at it, I would have no idea. But the next thing that I'm gonna grab here is quite exciting. So let me just grab it. This is the exhaust elbow off of it. So maybe this will clue you guys into what the engine is. This is the electronics box. All right, here is an exciting piece. This is a Crash KV997. So basically a thousand cc twin cylinder. This thing is a monster. Do you guys know anything about this? Let me know. Because I'm interested in all kinds of information about it. I looked up on their website and I wasn't able to find anything real quick. But I just did a quick search last night before going to bed at like 2 a.m. or something like that. So this is the engine that was pulled from the Sea Rat 2. This is what was powering the Sea Rat 2. And uh ended up having some issues some bolts rattled out of the exhaust and it was blowing exhaust into the hull and leaking exhaust pressure so it wasn't working good this engine before ever getting used is going to get completely tore down every nut and every bolt i'm going to go over it inspect it and uh, kind of check it over make sure that it's okay and then when it gets put back together I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do with it, but I'm pretty sure that it's going to end up. I've been working out here trying to organize stuff all day and it is finally getting dark. So I have no choice but to shoot this clip and show you guys what's kind of going on. So I've been doing a bunch of organizing. I've got wire, I've got curb parts, exhaust, pump more exhaust stuff electronics and e-box that is my vacuum infusion stuff 
I've got a crash engine sitting right here and up on that shelf I've got my 750 that I took out of the SSXI and put my 650 in. Beside that is the DASA and the 900 engines are going to need at least a full tear down. This one feels quite rough. When I turn the crankshaft it yeah I think I think there's bad bad bearings in there and it looks like it might have been smacked with a hammer or something to get it to free up so this crank needs to be rebuilt that crank almost certainly needs to be rebuilt and the 750 crank up there needs to be rebuilt so I think what I'm going to do is buy a press buy some pieces and uh, start rebuilding cranks because um, doing one or having one rebuilt is kind of hard to justify buying a press to press one apart but if you're gonna do three in a row it actually starts to pay for itself pretty quick so I think that's what I'll do the only thing I haven't told you guys about to this point is what the plan is for the bullet and you guys might have seen it in the background if you got eagle eyes this is 1500 fuel injected four stroke four cylinder and that is what's going in the bullet so I'll take a quick walk outside and I'll talk to you guys about what I have planned so far for the things that I have out there let me turn on some lights out side alley okay so the sea rat I'm probably going to get it running decent on what it has that way I'll know that I have a good working 1100 engine at that point I might actually pull that engine and actually build a custom engine for this I have some stuff in the works some stuff planned not sure if it's going to work out but this is kind of the perfect ski for it because it's had a few engines in and out of it already it's in pretty rough shape and I'm not too worried about what happens to the hull so that should be pretty fun that's kind of a project that's planned for the very distant future uh, my x2 needs some work now that I have other skis to ride and work on I'm probably going to do more finishing work on the top some of you have been asking me to do that we'll skip over to the leech we've pulled the 820 out of the leech and the plan as of now is to finish this up really nice try to make it as light as possible and turn this into a really lightweight ski with the crash engine in it so look forward to that the bullet basically I'm going to refinish the outside of it I'm going to put the 1500 uh, engine in it and completely redo it Jacob gave me a different pump for it uh, it's 1100 pump he has a Solus 12 vein in here that I'm going to re be removing and I may end up putting that on my X2. We'll see how the fitment goes, but uh, I kind of like the idea of trying that. So it may end up on either my original X2 or the Leech. So yeah, that is basically the plan as of now. The bullet has a hole full of random bits and pieces to get it up and running. I'm not 100% confident on what shape this engine is in. Jacob did a quick rebuild of it and it has nothing to do with him building it. it. has more to do with the fact that it sat after he built it and I don't know the condition of it before he put it together. So I would like to actually go through this whole engine and make sure that we have a good working dependable engine because it would really suck to get this in, spend all that time and uh, then struggle finding issues because we find out that it has, I don't know, a damaged cam or something that's going to make it act weird. That's going to do it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for being a part of the Joel Arsena YouTube channel. I appreciate every single one of you. Jump down in the comments section and let me know which project you were the most excited about because I quite honestly can't decide. Is it the crash engine going into the leech, the 1500 engine going into the bullet, or maybe seeing me work on the sea rat and seeing what I can do with that thing? Again, I really can't decide, so you guys let me know what you think. If you want to support my projects, I have a Patreon account. 
Link is in the description below. You can get in as low as $1 a month. If you guys wanna see some less edited content, some outtakes and some extras, some non-jet ski related content, then I have a second channel called Lowered Expectations. The link is also in the description below. So if you want, feel free to check that out. That's gonna do it for this one. Again, I appreciate every single one of you. I will see you guys soon with more project updates. See you next time.